Welcome to Habitat Live. Today, we're speaking with Phyllis Weisberg, partner at Armstrong Teasdale, about New York's shared work program and how it could help ease building staff costs during this health crisis. So first off, can you explain what the shared work program is? Um, the shared work program is a, a program that New York State's Department of Labor has had for a number of years, and there are similar programs in other states. It allows for temporary reduction in hours, uh, initially to help seasonal businesses where they had went through cycles and they didn't want to lay off employees. Um, it you can reduce the hours of an employee anywhere from 20 to 60% of their regular hours for a period of time. And what, and their reduction in pay is in part compensated by their eligibility for unemployment benefit. So for co-op and condo buildings, this would work for building staffs to reduce operating expenses for whatever this period of time is? Yes, um, it was not a device that was readily available to buildings that are, uh, have union employees. But on April 11th, the Realty Advisory Board and Local 32BJ, which represents the building employees, entered into what they call a memorandum of agreement authorizing the use of this program um, to help employers save money and help employees keep their jobs. So give me a... This was an outgrowth of what Congress did in the CARES Act, which was to encourage employers to use the shared work type program in order to preserve jobs. So give me sort of a hypothetical example of a, of a, of a co-op building or a condo building or any apartment building actually um, that has staff and wants to utilize this program. What are the dollar savings that you're looking at? The dollar savings are obviously um, determined by the size of the staff, but assuming the average wages paid to a porter or a handyman, the savings are going to be five, six hundred dollars a week per employee. Um, during this period, by the way, the employer has to continue paying all the health and fringe benefits that are required under the union contract. And those continue to accrue to the benefit of the employee. But uh, it's a program that's on a is viewed as temporary. Congress made it much sweeter because under the CARES Act, there's a $600 bonus payment available every week until July 31st so that employees not only would be eligible for their proportionate share of unemployment, but they would also get a $600 payment. And in most cases, that means employees actually make more than they would have had they been working a 40 hour week. So let's say I'm on the board of a, of a co-op and I have about 10 staff members ranging from supers to porters to handymen. And let's just make the situation a bit worse and say I have commercial tenants who are not, who have shut down and I've lost a lot of income. And if I join this program and we'll get to how I do that in a minute, just give me a sense of those 10 employees on my operating budget. If I were signed on for May and June, what would my savings be? If you have 10 employees, figure $500 a month, uh, a, a week per employee, and let's say it's eight weeks. So do the math. Um, it's, um, you know, 4000 it would be five thousand dollars a week. For so for weeks. for eight weeks, so that's forty five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's significant. Yeah, yeah, it would be. And I just want to make sure for the 
for the staff who almost all buildings really value, they will not actually be financially hurt. Correct. They will get, assuming their hours are cut by 50%, they will be entitled to 50% of the unemployment benefit they would get if they had been in fact fully unemployed. They will also get the $600 payment. And based on the union scale, that ends up certainly for porters and handyman, giving them more money than they would otherwise make. So, I mean, I've heard reports that in many buildings, particularly in Manhattan and perhaps in the outer boroughs also, over 50% of the building is empty. I guess lots of people have other places they can go to. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm basically now living in a building where 50% of the residents are gone, maybe I can justify cutting my staff. Would, would you think that would be one way I would look at it? Yeah, in, in some buildings, um, we've seen that 75% of the occupants are gone. There's no construction going on. There are no alterations going on. So there really is less of a need for staff. Um, and so in those buildings, it makes sense. Other buildings say, well, wait a minute, we have to do a lot more cleaning, we're concerned. And so we really need our staff and we need the cushion of extra staff in case someone gets sick. So it's a, an, it's a balancing act that each board has to look at. Right. So to participate in the program, what has to happen if one decides to? The employer has to file an application with the Department of Labor it's a two-page application, very simple. They also have to file a list of the employees that will be involved. And you can break your staff into units. So it doesn't have to be applicable to all your staff. For example, maybe it's only your door staff where you're overloaded in staff. You can keep your porters and handymen and only have it apply to your uh, door staff. You file that application online with the Department of Labor. I've been told it's not a difficult process. And in fact, there are there is help readily available on the phone. Um, you can actually find someone to talk to who will <laughs> help you with it. And um, then you also have to uh, provide a copy to the union. So you let them know what you're doing. You then... Um, the Department of Labor will take a few days or a week or so to approve the plan. And you have to provide a start date for your plan when you file with the Department of Labor. And uh, once you're approved, you can put the plan in operation. Again, you let the union know about the approval. And, and it, I assume at the same time, the employees have to file for unemployment benefits? Yes. What they do is they have to register and they can do that while the plan is pending approval. So they're up and ready to go. And then the plan has to be certified every week by the employer and the employees have to certify every week how many hours they worked, et cetera. It's a one page certification. It's relatively simple again. And the employees have to file that every week. They can file online and they can get direct deposit. And New York administers both the traditional unemployment portion of the payment and the $600 for under the CARES Act. So if you're, if you're governing a building where a large percentage of your residents have left, you have a lot of staff around, you feel you need to save money, perhaps you have commercial tenants, um, and you feel that you won't harm the cleanliness or you won't really harm the operations of your building, this is a relatively quick and painless way to save money in the next eight weeks. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. My pleasure.